This Shabbat reading is mostly dedicated to the description of the priestly garments, which includes the breastplate with the 12 precious stones, which represents the 12 tribes of Israel. We read about the vest and the robe, about the turban and the belt, about the two special shoulder pieces decorated with stones bearing the names of the tribes. The materials and the colors used to make these garments are described to us. Blue, scarlet, and purple dye, golden silk. Everything is done by the artist who received his inspiration directly from God. It is written that God filled those making these artifacts with a spirit of wisdom in order to fulfill his order to make sacred garments for your brother Aaron to give him dignity and honor. Reading about the construction of the sanctuary, we see that all its artifacts, like the golden menorah, the priestly garments, the artistic work of the sanctuary, even the basin, the altar, and all the materials plated with gold, silver, and bronze were done with precision and symmetry according to the divine instruction. All these artifacts created glory and splendor, beauty and majesty, fitting for the house of God. We discover that beauty and aesthetics are desirable and even important in serving God. Now, we can understand this about a building, about the temple. People who went up to the temple felt a tremendous feeling of awe as they entered the gates. But what is the purpose of the priestly clothes? The priestly clothes are important for two main reasons. First, to make an impression and to create public respect. Closeness to God requires separation between the holy and the common, the everyday life. That is why priests are dressed in a special way. They have to appear exalted above the people. They have to look special, similar to the king. Special garments create distance and honor. The truth is that in every religion, we can instantly recognize the leader, the head pastor, the head priest, or the rabbi of the congregation, as they will all be dressed in a special way. A good example is the robe of the Sephardic chief rabbi dressed with splendor to create respect of the community. So the first reason is to uplift people's attitude and to create honor and respect. The second reason is to cause the priest or the leader himself to respect his own position and to take his duties seriously. When a representative of some entity a king, a priest, or even a shift manager wears his uniform well, he understands that he represents something bigger. And thus, he will treat his own position with respect. We are all familiar with the concept of Shabbat clothes. What does it mean? Does God care about what we wear? In a way, yes. From our Torah portion, we learn that when a person comes to the house of God to be a part of the community, to stand before God and to pray, he has to look representable. He has to be clean and to be dressed in a proper and respectful manner. The well-known saying, clothes make the person, is true. When we dress properly, others will treat us accordingly. And we ourselves will treat the house of God 
with respect. When we dress in a respectful manner for Shabbat, for our congregation, or for our church, we show our respect for the occasion and for God. Clothing in the Bible is a world of its own. Often clothes represent a status, a mission, or even sin. Undressing often symbolizes a change in someone's position or other meaningful changes. For example, Joseph's coat of many colors, it was a symbol of his status. When his brothers took his coat off, it was a sign of him losing his position and going through a very significant change in life. Another example is when Elijah threw his coat upon Elisha. By doing this, he passed a prophetic calling and the mission to Elisha. In 1 Samuel chapter 18, Jonathan, the son of King Saul, took off his royal garments, his uniform, if you like, and gave it to David. It was a symbolic act of handing over for the future king, King David. And a few chapters later, he will openly admit it. You will be king over Israel, and I will be second to you. The New Testament also speaks about beauty and garments and clothes in a way that gives us balance. And why do you worry about clothes? See how the flowers of the field grow. They do not labor or spin. Yet I tell you that not even Solomon in all his splendor was dressed like one of these. With these words, Yeshua dismisses our efforts to always look good and asks, why do we worry about what to wear? He is sending us to the field. Look at the flowers God created. God created this world as he saw fit. And the lilies of the field, which do not knit, they do not sew or design clothes, but even the royal garments of kings cannot compare to the beauty and glory of the flowers in nature. We need to understand the balance of this saying. On the one hand, Yeshua does not encourage us to constantly worry and care about what to wear. As today, in the age of social media, the importance of our appearance is greatly exaggerated. We are spending huge amounts of money and we are making great efforts in order to get more responses and likes from others. But is it entirely useless and unnecessary? No. Our Torah portion teaches us that beauty and splendor have an important task. But our attitude to close has to be balanced, as it is also important to be dressed according to the occasion. Yeshua continues and teaches us the parable of the great feast, which is found in Matthew 22. This parable speaks of a king who made a wedding feast for his son and invited his people to come and join the celebrations. This parable of Yeshua speaks of the nation of Israel. God invited our people into his kingdom, but we refuse to listen. We refuse to listen to his voice, to do his will. Only a few people showed to the king's party. So he sent his servants to the streets of the city and invited more people to the feast. Whoever wants to come is welcome in the kingdom of heaven. Yeshua tells us that at the end, many people came to the wedding and the feast was full of guests. Passing through them, the king noticed a man who was not dressed for the wedding. And this is what we read from verse 
11 of Matthew 22. But when the king came in to see the guests, he noticed a man there who was not wearing wedding clothes. He asked, how did you get in without wedding clothes, friend? The man was speechless. Then the king told the attendants, tie him hand and foot and throw him outside into the darkness where there will be weeping and ganching of teeth. This text is very hard to hear. What just happened? What, why was the king so angry with a guy who arrived to the wedding without proper clothes? What do they symbolize? In the Bible, clothes can be a symbol of a person's spiritual state or his sins. For example, the prophet Zechariah in chapter 3 sees the high priest Joshua standing before the seat of judgment. Then he showed me Joshua, the high priest, standing before the angel of the Lord. Now Joshua was dressed in filthy clothes. As he stood before the angel, the angel said to those who are standing before him, take off his filthy clothes. Then he said to Joshua, see, I have taken away your sin and I will put fine garments on you. Then I said, put a clean turban on his head. So they put a clean turban on his head and clothed him. Garments can also mean salvation, as we see in the famous text of Isaiah. I delight greatly in the Lord. My soul rejoices in my God, for he has clothed me with garments of salvation and arrayed me in a robe of his righteousness. Getting back to Yeshua's parable of the wedding feast and the fellow who came to the wedding without proper clothes, we understand that it means that his lifestyle and his actions were not fitting for the kingdom of heaven. The wedding garments symbolize our robe of righteousness, our garments of salvation. And as we see from the text in Zechariah, that God Himself provides us with these garments. When Joshua, the high priest, is standing before the heavenly trial, the judge, the angel of his face, commands to take off him his old filthy clothes and to dress him into a new and pure garments. Meaning that Joshua, the high priest, received here a second chance but on a condition. If you will walk in obedience to me and keep my requirements. The judging angel cleans the old sins, but it happens on a condition that he will continue to walk in a way that pleases God and serve in God's temple honorably. God himself provides the wedding garments. But there is a condition, faith. We are commanded to serve one another and to serve God in faith and in the name of Yeshua, the Messiah. My understanding of the wedding feast parable is that the man without the wedding garments was the one who refused to take the second chance. And that is why the king threw him out of the party. And even more so, the king punished him and threw him into the darkness, far away from the light of God. Because of our faith, we can also get the second chance. And it does not matter how bad or how dirty our lives were before that. We see that at the judgment, Joshua is found guilty. His garments are filthy. Yeshua allows us to take these filthy clothes off. And He, Yeshua, will dress us in new and pure royal garments. 
but it is our responsibility to do God's will and to live according to His words. And now I want to talk about God's will because who really knows what God's will is? In order to understand God's will, we need to go back to Zechariah, to chapter 7. This is what the Lord Almighty said, Administer true justice. Show mercy and compassion to one another. Do not oppress the widow or the fatherless or the foreigner or the poor. Do not plot evil against each other. So according to Zechariah, and not only to him, but also according to Isaiah and Jeremiah, God's will is to provide true justice, to show mercy and compassion to one another, meaning to invest in taking care and helping others. Do not oppress the weak and the helpless, like the stranger, the helpless orphan or widow. Do not plot to do evil against one another. In other words, love your neighbor as yourself. In the New Testament, Jacob, James, wrote in his epistle something very similar. He also tells us what is the will of God. Religion that God our Father accepts as pure and faultless is this, to look after orphans and widows in their distress and to keep oneself from being polluted by the world. In general, God wishes for us to help one another, especially those less fortunate who cannot help themselves, who depend on the mercy of others. And God forbid, if we abuse their innocence or their weakness, and we should stay away from the evil of this world, from the negative influence. For conclusion, our Torah portion talks about the priestly garments and the tabernacle ornaments. Make sacred garments for your brother Aaron to give him dignity and honor. And I am convinced that when we come to the house of God on Shabbat, we too must be dressed with dignity and honor. Thus, we will honor the people around us, and psychologically, the clothes will cause us to take our position and the house of God more seriously. Shabbat Shalom.